Welcome to Stream Economy. I am a little bit under the weather this week, but the show must go on, everybody. And Deadline exclusively reported this week that Marvel is fast tracking none other than Shang-Chi to be its first Asian superhero lead. After the wild success of Black Panther, Marvel is hoping to do something similar with Shang-Chi. And it looks like they already have a writer on board, but we'll get to him in a minute. So this movie isn't actually official official, but it's likely Marvel isn't going to make anything official until at least phase three closes out with the next Avengers movie. Now, if you aren't a huge comic book geek, you might not be familiar with Shang-Chi. So here's what we know. Shang-Chi made his first appearance in December of 1973. Now, he's a creation of Steve Englehart and Jim Starlin and made that first appearance in special Marvel edition number 15. Happy birthday, Shang-Chi! You don't look a day over 20, even though you're 45 years old. <laughs> he is a half Asian, half American hero who actually until recently did not have any special powers except the ability to master many different types of combat. That's why he's called the master of Kung Fu. He was taught by his father, Fu Manchu, who ends up being a little bit disappointing as far as dads go, which, let's all be real here, is a classic trope. He's been affiliated with the Heroes for Hire, he's been on the Avengers, and he also is kind of a lone wolf a lot of the time, which is pretty cool. And then also, a few years ago, in Avengers Volume 5, number 38, he gained the ability to replicate himself, which could also be a power he ends up having in the MCU. Also, fun fact, this isn't the first time Marvel has considered making a movie starring the Master of Kung Fu. All the way back in 2005, before the MCU had even began, Marvel announced it had raised hundreds of millions of dollars and planned to make 10 movies based off its comic characters. And Shang-Chi was one of them. As for the script, I mentioned Marvel is already looking at a writer, and that is Dave Callahan. This is a Chinese-American writer, and if you're wondering about his geek street cred, well, don't. He co-wrote Wonder Woman 1984, and he's also co-writing the sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This guy knows his stuff. And he can also speak honestly to the cultural experience, as well as easily avoid a lot of stereotypes that we tend to see in kung fu movies, which will be really nice. Now, where could we see this movie? Well, it's likely that we will not see it until at least phase four, maybe the start of phase five, but I'm guessing if they're fast-tracking it like Deadline says, it's gonna be phase four. And Kevin Feige, Marvel super producer extraordinaire, has had some things to say about the direction of phase four. He said, quote, there are all sorts of adventures to be had, unquote, within the quantum realm in a recent book about the first 10 years of Marvel Studios. But he's also cautioned fans not to get too crazy because Marvel isn't entirely 100% going in a cosmic direction. So this might be a really good movie to keep the MCU grounded here on Earth. Now, as to why this movie is being fast-tracked, well, it's no secret that 2018 has seen a huge boom in Asian-led filmmaking by Asians, for Asians, with Asians. Just look at the success of Crazy Rich Asians or the fact that countries like China have been investing heavily in the film industry for years. Not to mention the Chinese movie-going audience is a huge source of revenue, or potentially anyway, for any studio that can tap into that market. So now that we know all the facts, let's Let's speculate a little bit. Let's fan cast, shall we? Uh, I think it's just as important to figure out who could play Shang-Chi and his father. These are both key roles. Shang-Chi is only 19 years old in the comics, but it's possible they age him up just a little bit so they can cast a wider net for the role. Not for nothing, but my personal choice for Shang-Chi would be Ross Butler, who's on Riverdale. Honestly, you guys, this is a no-brainer. Just cast this kid, He's, he would be amazing. I think he'd do a great job, in my humble opinion. Now, as for Shang-Chi's father, Fu Manchu isn't technically an original Marvel creation, not to mention the name carries a lot of not-so-great racial stereotyping baggage in Hollywood. So they'll likely modernize this character with a new background and likely a new name. As for who could play this role, I think you have to go in the direction of casting a legend in martial arts film. Which brings me to my three picks, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and Donnie Yen. These are amazing picks. I think it would be a great nod 
to martial arts cinema of yore. These are all icons in their own right. They would all be excellent at this role. It would be a meaty thing for them to dig their teeth into, and I think any one of them would be great. Okay, so now that we've talked about the characters, let's talk about who's the badass director to tie it all together. Amazing Chinese director Chloe Zhao is already helming Eternals, so she's probably out. Crazy Rich Asians' John M. Chu might be pretty tied up with the sequels to that movie, but he'd still be a really good pick if he could make his schedule work. Marvel could also decide to bring Hulk director Ang Lee back into the fold, but I wonder if they'd rather have someone younger and fresher. Which brings me to what I feel is the most obvious choice, and that is Fast and Furious director Justin Lin. I mean, how do you not hire this guy to direct this movie? He's even directing an untitled Shaolin Temple remake. He was made for this, you guys. And our final bit of speculation is how Shang-Chi might make his way into the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. Aside from his own standalone film, of course, there's going to be some post credit scene or some direct mention of him in one of the movies leading up to it. So my best guess on how he might show up in the MCU has to do with a villain called Midnight. Midnight is an African child raised alongside Shang-Chi who ends up carrying out Fu Manchu's orders when he grows up. Could Midnight be the antagonist in a, I don't know, Black Panther 2? Maybe. I think it's a good idea. I'm also not Kevin Feige and I'm not in charge of the larger MCU, but I am sure we will have to learn more about all of this and Shang-Chi's standalone film after the events of the next Avengers movie as we get into phase four. Now, until then, I'm sure Serral's has something to say. Hey, Serral's, take it away. So what do you think about Marvel? It's there, isn't it? It's just part of your life now, isn't it? Like, like a soap opera. So we just sit there and just wait for them to come out and then watch them and then we go, oh, that one was good, that one was not so good, oh, whatever. I can't even find the energy to get angry about Marvel. It's just part of my life. It's like taking a dump. It's like doing, going to the toilet and doing a wee man and just like blowing my nose because I've got a cold or making a cup of tea and having a drink. That's Marvel. Marvel's everywhere. Marvel's omnipresent. Marvel is our lord and saviour. When the bomb drops and we're all dust and ashes. Marvel is there. It will always be there. It's been there before you were born and it will be there when you are dead. Bless you. Thank you so much for watching. We have one more episode until we go on holiday break. So be sure to come back next Saturday morning for an all new episode of Stream Economy. Check out previous episodes over here, and I want to hear your best Shang-Chi theories down in the comments, so get to it. <laughs>